about you. Yes. I'm excited you're coming here. And you went on this trip, right? You went on this trip for about three weeks or a month. Mm -hmm. And now you're here. And you're saying you're in a relationship? I am in a relationship. Okay. We, we fight probably about maybe once a week. Maybe a little less than that. But we fight mm -hmm. pretty reg regularly. Uh -huh. And... You know, I can I can say, oh, it's because he does this and he does that, and mm -hmm. I don't like it. But really, it comes down to I've got nothing else better to do, and so I think about mm -hmm. things that bother me. You do, or both of I, you? Don't. Well, I do, and oh. what bothers him is he's a very independent person, mm -hmm. and I, I forgot to tell you that I'm really interested in personality types as well. Okay, he, he is a thinker judger and I'm a feeler intuitive. So what are those four letters for you? I'm an um, ENFT. Okay. ENFP. I'm an ENFP also. Oh wow, that's great. He is an ENTJ. That's different. Yes, and since I'm not a very confident mm -hmm. uh, person. On the whole? On the whole, uh -huh. because I'm not a very confident person on the whole, mm -hmm. that leads me to be more clingy, and right. he's very independent and very self-confident. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for that's where his problem lies, is mm -hmm. he, he goes out of his mind. And he, he talked with my mom, she visited, and he's like, I tell her she needs to take care of Joy all the time. <laughs> you know, but I, I've developed myself so that I'm constantly trying to make other people happy. That's interesting. And for someone who's so independent, mm -hmm. that becomes frustrating to him because yeah. he doesn't want me to try and make him right, happy. Right, right. You know? He's a self-pleasing and exactly. you're sort of a people pleaser. Exactly. Yeah. And and so, you know, we, we love each other very much, but mm -hmm. we fight a lot. And mm -hmm. I... Um, we agree that it's because mm -hmm. I'm so shaky in myself, mm -hmm. and, which is one of the reasons I was looking forward to working with yeah, you is because yeah. it sounds like you can help me. Absolutely. That's really interesting. You said a couple interesting points. Now, your name is Joy. Yes, it is. Do you feel like you live a joyous life? Do you feel like you are joyful? I feel like I'm a contradiction mm. because when I turn on, mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm at my best, mm -hmm. I am charisma. I am you joy. Seem like it. I, <laughs> I mean, um, yes. I it, it's mm -hmm. like it's like I've read all those books that mm -hmm. tell you how to win people over. Mm -hmm. It's just that when I'm left to my own demises, when mm -hmm. I when I uh, like I was telling my boyfriend just the other day, when I go into my default mode, it's mm -hmm. like I fall flat, and there's mm -hmm. nothing, and. Um, you know, it's because I don't know what makes me happy when That's I'm by myself. I yeah. don't, I don't know, and so I just fall flat and get mm -hmm. really depressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, That's fair enough. <laughs> and do you feel like you've been this way like for as long as you can remember? No. Well, mm, very young. Mm -hmm. I, it began very young. Uh, my mom was with someone who abused us mm -hmm. and it's it's very easy to notice the shift you know mm -hmm. I went from being really sociable mm -hmm. in school to wandering around the play yard mm -hmm. and, you know spending a lot of time by myself mm -hmm. and, um, and then in high school you know it got worse I stopped painting and writing poetry and mm -hmm. things that I really enjoyed you sound just like me I used to paint I used to write poetry I used yeah. to write songs when I was little <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, and then in college it got mm -hmm. worse and mm -hmm. I stopped doing theater arts and mm -hmm. you know, it's like little by little I began to do less of the things that I enjoy mm -hmm. and if I wasn't around people and pleasing them, then I was just being miserable by myself. Mm -hmm. so. That's interesting. So do you feel like by yourself you kind of are lost or don't really know what to do or? Well, I... I uh, guess I guess that would be it because, like I said, I don't know what makes me happy other than seeing other people happy. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. that's an easy one. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just by myself, I just it just feels empty, pointless. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I've talked with friends who feel bad about themselves and mm -hmm. tell them, you know, that really if they can make themselves happy, then mm -hmm. other people will be happier and all the all the wisdom that I've ever read comes out of my mouth. Yes. But applying but it to you, myself, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it just disappears. I forget everything I know. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you don't really like your own company? Or do you like your own company? Uh, I guess I'm indifferent to it. it yeah. You know, it's, it's not like I, well, I do look forward to time by myself sometimes, but mm -hmm. it's more just because 
it's downtime, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm on, and mm -hmm. so sometimes I just need to be down, yeah. <laughs> just relaxed for a minute, but um, I, it's more or less that I'm, I'm indifferent to mm -hmm. my own company, because it doesn't, it doesn't offer me anything that I'm aware of. Mm. Um, I haven't learned to enjoy it and embrace it. And or value it. Or value it, mm. yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Okay, and so that's a little bit about you. How do you feel, so I take it, your confidence, you know, like describing <laughs> your confidence from one to 10, 10 being the highest, zero being the lowest. Well, it's, it's really ridiculous because everyone has, you know, the confidence and the voices of self-doubt mm. and my confidence is probably this tiny little voice, you mm -hmm. know, and, and when I'm, when it's, when it's heard, mm -hmm. I can do anything, you mm -hmm. know. I take these surveys about my skills, and mm -hmm. so it's like, yes, I know I can do that, but, mm -hmm. but that, that self-doubt really just takes over completely, mm -hmm. and it, it rules everything. Really? You know, it, re it really does, and okay. if, has told me that's my boyfriend's okay. name. Um, I don't know. Can you bleep that out? Yeah, <laughs> Peter is his name, right? Peter, or whatever. <laughs> um, so he, you know, he's recently been repeating himself. Just tell that boy shut the fuck up. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. You, that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, just tell it to shut up. Stop being a bitch and just, you know. Yeah, just, it's got to play. It's, it's not like you. Some, yeah. You know, and and I don't. It doesn't make sense to me. You mm -hmm. know, because I guess. I just assume that it's there for a reason. You know, uh, maybe maybe I shouldn't trust the confident voice. So you voice. Okay, okay. And it's, which which I know is probably just the self doubt taking control again. It's like a big bully, is what it, it is. It really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. So you tend to give in to the self doubt and think, okay, there's a reason why it's telling me this. It must be my intuition or something like mm -hmm. that. And and I'm so you go very again. strong believer of my intuition, mm -hmm. and so you know, I just trust it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there is a difference between intuition, you know, your subconscious mind who always is looking out for your higher self and mm -hmm. your best self, and your conscious mind who is not necessarily looking out for your best self. Your conscious mind is that bully in you because mm -hmm. you, you know, have been through so much as a person and so you have all these limiting beliefs built up mm -hmm. and you have all these scars built up and wounds, everyone does. And that's what's on the outside. That's the, that's the conscious mind that's like, you know, no, you can't lose 10 pounds or no, you can't do this and that. And here's the reasons why, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, because it's built up all this resistance to it and fair enough, you know, that makes sense. But the, so, I mean, how is it supposed to, then if that's the guiding force, then how is the, your unconscious or your subconscious mind supposed to ever pull through? How is it ever supposed to make a change then if you've got this bully talking all the time? You know, and so what happens to you is it sounds like you're kind of giving that more power. You're giving the bully more power sometimes. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. So, so your confidence is wavering then. It's never like, sometimes it's high, but it's not like a solid. I, uh, I wouldn't even say sometimes. It's usually pretty rare that that voice is ever heard. Mm. You know, it's, it's more like. A, a sense of reason will say that that can't be right. You know, you mm -hmm. are good at something. Everyone is good at mm -hmm. something. So then I, I let the little voice speak. And <laughs> you, know. you let it speak for like five seconds. It's like screaming, more attention. Yes, right. <laughs> okay. All right, so you let it speak sometimes. You're, you're not usually like raving confident. Can you remember a time in your life when you were really confident? Or was there a time when you felt a lot more confident about yourself? I know I was a really confident kid. I mean, mm -hmm. I I befriended everyone. Mm -hmm. I I have lots of memories of you know going over to the child crying who was left out, being mm -hmm. like, "You can play. It's okay." Yeah. Just like they didn't. Other kids would let them play because I wanted them to. Uh -huh. Like I I was very in control, mm -hmm. and I I lost it. You know, mm -hmm. like I felt really good about everything I did. You know, mm -hmm. whether it was handstands or painting or poetry, mm -hmm. whatever it was, you mm -hmm. know, I, I felt really confident that it was great. Yeah, you know? yeah that's and, good. And it, it just, you know, like I said, it went away less mm -hmm. and less, or more and more, it went away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It yeah. dwindled. Yes. And again, did you, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but did you, was there a certain event that made it all go away or was it just a gradual I, decline? I think it was a gradual decline. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, 
I think the the progression of you know my my success not seeming to make my external environment any better mm-hmm. sort of helped me to feel like it didn't matter whether I did well or not and I stopped trying uh-huh. and then when you stop trying you start doubting your ability because you're not practiced anymore. Well you're you're keep on fitting that mold then. Yeah. You know, you're not trying so you're you're just keep on fitting that, oh I'm failing and mm-hmm. I might as well just continue to do to fit that same feeling I have about myself. Yeah, absolutely. And so you said something about external you weren't really up for making the external part of you set you up for success? Or? Well, um, just family life was just chaos growing up you know uh-huh. my mom was a single mom my brother had anger issues mm-hmm. my sister my older sis, my younger brother had mm-hmm. anger issues my older sister acted out a lot and mm-hmm. was rebellious and mm-hmm. my mom didn't really know how to control them mm-hmm. and that affected me as the middle child and mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a lot like me a single mom middle child <laughs> yeah and um you know, and I couldn't do anything you know, mm-hmm. to to make things better on the outside. Yeah, you felt did you feel kind of like helpless or powerless? Yeah, too? absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Okay, so that probably led to a little bit of that inner chaos going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, and did you start acting out in certain ways, or was there like rebelliousness in you too? <laughs> no, no, mm-hmm. I was the good child. My mom, my mom made no qualm about telling me, not the mm-hmm. other kids but telling me that I was her favorite and she appreciated that, mm-hmm. <laughs> that I made her life easy. And, uh-huh. and so I, I always um, made sure not to demand her attention and, mm-hmm. you know, just be in the background. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and then when I went to college, it was kind of when I fell apart, basically, mm-hmm. because I didn't have to be the good child anymore. Yeah. And I just, you know, I spent a lot of time not going to class, staying in my room, and mm-hmm. just miserable. <laughs> so you were, when you were like ditching classes or whatever, or, or skipping classes, you'd be in your room, doing what, would you be like hanging out, or like would you just be like depressed? No, kind just, of? you know, sit, sitting in my windowsill, mm-hmm. lying on the bed crying, like mm-hmm. really miserable, depressed. Mm-hmm. And was it, can you, was it depression about something in particular, or what? I guess myself, just yeah. because I blame myself for mm-hmm. where I was at and being unhappy mm-hmm. and not knowing why and thinking that if I had done something right some way along the way, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. then I wouldn't be so miserable. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I gotcha. And so in the past, did you, were you on medication ever or? That was I... before I had um, started medication, uh-huh. um, about that time. Uh, one of uh, my professors actually, I went to speak to her after mm-hmm. that class was over. Mm-hmm. Was supposed to be their big important day or whatever, <laughs> and I didn't show up, so I went after and talked mm-hmm. with her. And she was really wonderful, walked me to the counseling center. Mm-hmm. They helped me find a counselor in the community, and mm-hmm. they suggested I take medication. And so I started, and mm-hmm. it was, you know, and that continued on and off because I. <laughs> my lack of commitment to it yeah um and then you know various ones worked they worked for a while Mm -hmm. and then they wouldn't work and Mm -hmm. so i mean that was on and off right like i said some of it worked some of it didn't Mm -hmm. but the conflict in me about wanting to be well without it Mm -hmm. also made it so that I wasn't very consistent with it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like probably a self-sabotaging thing, like, mm-hmm. well, I'm not really that okay with taking this anyway, so. So if it doesn't work, yeah, <laughs> if right. I don't take it, it can't work. Yeah, it solves the problem right there. Yeah. Which is good, which is very impressive, too, that at even that young age that you were having difficulties with it, because you know that some meds are gonna work, some aren't, they're only gonna work. They're, it's a temporary fix. It's, mm-hmm. gonna, it's gonna be the treatment, not the cure. Right. The cure comes from within you and building yourself. And if you don't ever fix yourself, you're going to be on meds till you're 95. Exactly. You know, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Which is great way for the medical industry to make exactly, money. Exactly. Exactly. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I believe in conspiracy theories or anything. But I do. Oh, well, yeah. I'll say it. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but maybe. 